This video is for a subscription administrator who's preparing uh, for a workspace move. And a workspace move is basically taking one workspace and moving it out of the source subscription into uh, a target subscription or the new subscription. Basically just moving everything within that workspace to another subscription. And in order to move users with that workspace, you need to make sure that those users have on only have access to that one workspace. If they have access to more than one workspace, they will not be included in that move. So here's how to use the workspace permissions tool to easily identify which users have access to that workspace you care about and another one or many more. And it takes uh, using this uh, a workspace permissions tool uh, as well as a little bit of uh, work in Excel to, um, to figure it out. So, Really, uh, I'm going to start by using uh, this KB, um, which uh, goes through exactly what this tool is and what it's used for. Uh, and I'm going to uh, start by actually creating a custom page to put that tool on. Um, because it is a custom uh, app, I need to create a custom page with a custom HTML app to do that. And I can name my new page uh, Workspace Permissions Tool. It looks like I've done this before. Um, I can you know, do this and then go ahead and hit save and close. And then I can select the full screen layout or full page layout and click start adding apps. I'm going to type HTML to filter my results and add the custom HTML app. And I'm going to name this workspace permissions, I guess. And for here, I need to get the HTML for that app. And here's the link. I can just click into that. It's going to take me, I need to click here to continue. Um, it's going to take me to just the um, the repository with that that HTML. I'm just going to copy all of this out, and there we go. And I'm going to paste that into this app. Here we go. And I'm going to hit save. So again, you do need to be a subscription administrator to run this because you need to have access to all the workspaces in your subscription. This might take a long time depending on how many workspaces you have and how many users you have. This is a test sub subscription that we use in CI support. Uh, so it has a ton of workspaces, but not that much data. So hopefully um, it won't take too long. Okay, so the workspace permissions tools finished gathering all the users across all the workspaces. And it looks like I have about uh, 6,500 users. So I don't really wanna start paging through this list. There's not much more you can do here um, other than export this. So I'm going to go ahead and export this list to CSV. And from here, I'm going to open that file in Excel. And this is where um, you kind of need to know what you're doing in Excel a little bit um, to, to uh, look at this data and identify those users who have access to the workspace that you care about and potentially any other workspaces so that you can clean that up. The first thing I like to do is I like to format my data as tables. It just gives me more options for filtering. I also like to add another um, another column over here. I'm going to call it conflict just because I'm, I'm trying to identify workspace permission conflicts. Um, from here, you can just select any field in this table and you can click format as table and then click your formatting. Go ahead and click my table has headers and click OK. And that's going to format our table nicely for us. And so the subscription that I care about, say I'm, the subscription that I'm moving is called Two Streeter Workspace. And I wanna identify those users who have access to that workspace. So I can click this little drop down here and I can filter on that workspace. I'm just gonna type Two Streeter and there it is. So now I'm just filtering on those users who have access to that workspace. Now they might have access to other workspaces as well, but I don't know that yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy just this data and I'm going to paste it into another worksheet. And that's going to be my lookup table. I'm going to use that to look up for these users. Do they have access to any other uh, workspace? And I'm going to format that as table as well because I like to refer to tables and I like to use them for filtering. So I'm going to go back to that un initial uh, worksheet and I'm going to remove that filter. You can just click over here and you can click clear filter. Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove uh, that two streeter workspace um, from the selection. I'm not sure why this hasn't selected all of it. Um, I'm going to remove that because I want to identify 
those for those users who have access to that, what other workspaces do they have access to? So I'm going to uncheck that. All right. So now I need a VLOOKUP formula to look up against my lookup table. And that just you just need to know the formula. I'm going to um, put this out there as well, but um, its syntax goes like this. So VLOOKUP and then the lookup value, which is the username. And the table array is this table that we created over here. I'm just going to select the whole thing and comma. And I'm going to say, hey, grab the index number, which is, or grab this workspace column. And this is one, two, three, four, five, the fifth column. And that's going to display it for me. I'm going to type false because I want it to be an exact match. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Okay. So. Uh, what that did is it's it's just uh, looking up for this username. Are there um, is that username? Or I guess does that username exist in this table? And if so, um, you know, show the workspace that they have access to over here. And so look, we have a match over here. And what I'm going to do to make this a lot easier is just filter out the NAs, meaning there wasn't a match, and that'll give me a nice list of those those user accounts. Cool. So it looks like, ooh, this uh, this one user has access to a lot of workspaces. I'm going to go ahead and sort ascending on that column. And it looks like these users have, these are all the users who have access to that two-streeter workspace. But look, they have access to all these other workspaces too. So what I'm going to have to do is go in and for each of these users, if I want them to move over with that subscription, then I'm going to need to remove their access, or I'm sorry, to move over with that workspace. I'm going to need to remove their access to these other workspaces. And now I know which users I need to look at. If I don't care, if I don't mind that those users are left behind, I can go ahead and leave their settings uh, as they are. But at least now I have a list of the users whose um, permissions I need to change. Okay, so once we have our list of users um, who we can identify as uh, those that are in our workspace, this two-streeter workspace, but also have access to another workspace. We want to uh, have an easy way to identify those because sometimes this could be a, a really long list. It's not too long for me here, um, but it could be pretty crazy. So one way to make it a lot easier on yourself, at least to identify those users, is to create a pivot table. Uh, so to do that, we can just uh, you know put our uh, I guess highlight any cell in our table, click insert, click pivot table, and then just hit OK. That's going to create a new worksheet with that pivot table in it. And we're going to start with this conflict field. So we want to filter for any of those rows that had that workspace that we care about in it. So we're going to just leave in the two subtreater workspace because if you remember, um, over on this um, this worksheet, we filtered for just that workspace. So we want those users who are just who are in that workspace, but also have access to other workspaces. And that's going to filter our data over here. So um, we can go back over here and just turn off the NA basically. And then we can close that. We can drag users down into rows. And then we can do a count of workspaces. And any of those fields would work. It's just a count of the rows. And for luckily for me, I don't have that many. But I can see that, oh, we've got these users have access to these this many workspaces. Oh, luckily, though, um, this JS person only has access to that one workspace as well as JS WS admin. So I know that I need to address these ones, and I'm, I can even sort this, you know, largest to smallest. And I know that oh, I, I need <laughs> to take some time with this person. But if I want to look at say just this person or this person, and just look at the uh, workspaces they have access to, so I know which ones to remove, just double click that, and that'll bring up this little thing, and you can show workspace, and then it'll just basically expand um, and show the workspaces. You could also um, drag this workspace column down there, but it acts a little funny when you do it over here as opposed to just double clicking um, in the pivot table. So that's really nice. So we know uh, JS editor is a problem, but you know what? Let's let's look at Johnny here. Um, and oh yeah, he's yeah. So these are the workspaces we need to remove this user from. So we can go over to Agile Central. We can click on System Admin and 
uh, in our users, we can filter for that Johnny character. There he is. So um, let's go ahead and click Edit. And then we can go and highlight those workspaces or, or remove permissions from those workspaces. And I actually need to go back to Excel to see what those were. So, okay, so two straighter we're going to leave, but 404, Lori, Denise, and Zed. So let's go back here. I lost that window. So four, I just did a Command F or Control F on Windows. Control F, 404. I'm going to remove that access. There was uh, Lori. And there it is. We're going to remove access. There was Denise's workspace. We're going to remove access. And what was it? Let me save this before I lose that change. Um, clicking off of here. It's going to take a second. There we go. Um, and it was Z. That's right. So Command F, Control F. Search for Z. There it is. No access. And we can save and close. There. Now Johnny only has access to that one workspace we care about, that two-streeter workspace, and we can continue on down our list with the other users that we need to remove access for. And that's how you do it. To learn more about Rally and Agile practices, check out our blog and community. Like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you never miss new content as it's added.